Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you a strategy for making money online selling Amazon eBooks. So I'm going to kind of go over step by step how you can get started doing this without really even needing to be someone with a writing background. The first step, of course, is to create an account with kdp.amazon.com, which is the homepage of Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. If you're going to self-publish eBooks, this is the place where you need to sign up so that you can create your books. So here you can earn up to 70% royalties on sales all over the world and actually publish your own eBooks without having to go through a publisher or a lot of other steps that you would normally have to back in the day. So the next thing you need to do is figure out a niche for what kind of books you're going to sell. Obviously it helps to do something that you specialize in. Maybe you've done it as a hobby, maybe you've done it as a career, maybe you uh, have a blog about it or something like that. Um, but otherwise, you can just research different niches and do a lot of research and then hire somebody to write the books for you and to go that route. There are a lot of people who actually have built businesses on this and they will publish multiple books per week. They'll get, you know, maybe a few sales or maybe even a few hundred dollars worth of sales of books per book each month and then it just creates a large amount of passive income so to do more of that strategy what you can do is go to kindle ebooks on amazon's search bar right there and then look on the left side here and look at different uh, types of categories that you can find books in so you see cooking you see computers and technology you see business and money and so what you want to do is kind of click through each of these kind of categories and then you want to look into subcategories so for instance I clicked on the health fitness and dieting category and then you have more subcategories that come up so you have like nutrition personal health relationships death and grief diets and weight loss disease and physical ailments things like that and then of course it also helps if you can tie it into present-day things that are kind of trending upwards so for instance, obviously we had a pandemic this year. A lot of people are probably going to focus more on maybe their immune system and how to boost that and different supplements they can take, different habits they can have. So, you know, there are different things that can happen in current events that can also affect what people are searching for in terms of what kind of books they read. And that can be something you can look up as well. But you want to find a niche that basically has good volume of searches without being too competitive. So for instance, you could look up the best seller rank for certain Kindle eBooks that you see in search results for these subcategories. And you're going to want to look for some that are under the top 100,000. So if they are under the top 100,000 and the Amazon best sellers rank, the book is probably making really good income. And it needs, of course, to be on one of the top two pages of search results for that subcategory. So other than that, you want to also look for how many search results there are in general. So for instance, I looked up immune system related books and it came out with 3000 search results on Amazon's page. So basically that tells me that it's a small niche and that if it is 5000 results or so or less, it is pretty small niche and there's not going to be much competition. So you look at some of the books at the top here, there's not going to be too much competition usually when there's that few search results, which means there's more potential for you to rank in one of the top three spots for your book. Now, if there's a niche with 50,000 plus search results, then that means there's a big market demand, but that also means the competition is probably going to be much higher. And so that's something that's better left for after you've done a few books and been successful with them in smaller niches and then you can rank them later on for the more competitive ones with 50,000 plus search results that will have more income potential. So again, just think about your expertise, what kind of books have really good like small niche categories that you can focus on, and then you can worry about writing and stuff here in a little bit. I'll cover how you can get that done if you're not necessarily a great writer yourself. As far as other ways that you can do research on keywords and topics, again, I mentioned things like current events and how they affect what people search for in terms of books, in terms of content, etc. You can use Google Trends by going to trends.google.com to search for current events, things that people are searching for a lot lately, um, and for instance, things like Bitcoin, how many people have been searching for Bitcoin over the last few years and how many people are 
searching more and more over time you can see that interest over time has gone up a lot for say bitcoin so if you were doing a finance book you might try and go for that um, so things like that can really help with Google Trends and it's a free service to use. You can also use a keyword tool. They have a free and paid version, but they actually have one specifically for Amazon and it's at keywordtool.io. So the website allows you to pick a keyword tool for whichever platform you're trying to rank things on and it helps you with your SEO key keyword research for book titles and topics and things like that. So you can click on Amazon, type in whatever you're trying to rank for after you've done some research on categories and then you can see what kind of search volume there is, what kind of competition there is. It just kind of takes it to the next level. So next you want to figure out a great title. So a title has three main aspects that make it good. One is that it ranks for keywords and search results. Again, if you are someone who's famous or already kind of a celebrity, or maybe you have a really large blog following or YouTube channel or something, you might not need to worry as much about SEO because you can drive your own traffic to the book. But if you're say trying to make a book publishing business, maybe you're trying to stay anonymous and use pen names, maybe not use your real name, and you just tried to rank books for passive income, you might want to focus more for SEO in your title. So for instance, you have the first part of your title, like you see this one here is called An Elegant Defense. And then you have the subtitle, which will be like The Extraordinary New Science of the Immune System, A Tale in Four Lives. So there's the short kind of first part of the title usually, and then there's like a subtitle that kind of goes a little more in depth about what the book is about. For the main part of the title, you wanna focus on things like SEO, what kind of keyword, what kind of keywords you're trying to rank for. And then the second part of a good title is to make it very compelling. Obviously it needs to make people want to click on it. It needs to be persuasive. It needs to have certain types of words and language in them that make it seem like it will, you know, really better their lives if they read this book and really tempt them to buy it. So that's great for the subtitle part. That can really be sold more in the longer end of the title which would be the subtitle. So you see this part kind of after an elegant defense, the subtitle here would be the part that kind of sells it. The Extraordinary New Science of the Immune System, A Tale in Four Lives. So that sounds pretty good. An Extraordinary New Science of the Immune System and how people might use that to better their health. So that's what you want to do kind of with the subtitle. And then another thing you want to do with the whole thing is just don't mislead people. That's a great way to get bad reviews and to never be successful at this is to mislead people about what's in the book and have a great title that maybe makes people think there's something in there that actually is not in the content. So never do that as well. But if you can rank for keywords, have it very compelling and clickable, makes people want to buy it and then does not mislead people. Those are three of the main aspects of a good title. So one thing you can do, again, you are using mostly SEO for the first part of the title. For the part that really sells it, that makes it compelling, you might copy and paste your different drafts of the subtitle and paste them in the co-schedule headline analyzer right here. So you paste it here and click analyze now, and it will basically analyze your title and tell you what maybe you should use more words here, whether it kind of creates a positive vibe or a neutral or a negative vibe for the different types of words you're using. It'll make it more compelling and more clickable just by uh, analyzing it for you. And it's a free tool. All you gotta do is sign up for the coschedule.com um, profile, which is just like your name and email. And then you can use this tool here um, at coschedule.com called the headline analyzer. So next, obviously you need to make a really good cover. Now, there are a few different ways you can do this. If you want to do it on your own and save the most money possible and you're not artistic at all, you can use canva.com. So you can go to say search Canva and click book and you'll see book cover come up and it'll also, it'll also be optimized in the proper aspect ratio. So it pops up perfectly in search results on Amazon. So then you can see all these different templates. And when you click on a template, for instance, let's say you clicked on this one right here, just as a random example, then you can change the colors, you can change the background images. They also have lots of stock photos you can use on the site. They have all the tools you need built in here that you just kind of drag and drop and, and edit here and there for you to make a really nice book cover without having to be an artist, without having to use Photoshop and things like that. So canva.com, 
really great. I actually like the paid version because it gives you more to work with, but um, they have a really good free version as well that I actually started out with probably my first year using it. So you can do that. Again, if you're really artistic, use something like Photoshop and you can do it yourself. If you're really confident in your abilities, the third option is to hire someone. Now you can hire someone at, place, at a place like 99designs where you can actually run a competition for the best book cover and pick the one that wins, but this will cost you a few hundred dollars. The alternative would be to go to a place like Fiverr.com where you can pay as little as five dollars or as much as a few hundred dollars depending on what you're looking for for a book cover. Now a book cover usually will not cost you very much. It might cost you like five to twenty-five dollars depending on the quality of work this person is doing, but you just type in say book cover on here you might even put ebook cover click search and then you can look at the different gigs that are available and see which one looks best and these people have lots of reviews they have lots of add-ons and they can get it done for you in a faster time period if you pay a little bit more and so you have a lot to choose from here so the next thing you have to think about of course is the content you have to actually have the book written so one thing to think about is you don't need to have a really long book, especially if you're focusing on nonfiction, which I recommend for this strategy. Um, if you're doing nonfiction books, you're trying to rank things for people that are searching for some you know, solution to whatever their problem is and they want a more in-depth book than just some blog post, then you can write a book that's at least 15 words long as long as it's just stuffed full of really good information and is really well written. So one example of a really short book that did really well is called As a Man Thinketh. You can look it up on Amazon and it is only like 26 pages long or so. You know, it can tell you how long the book is once you look more up about the book. But it's 26 pages long and it's got 7,800 plus reviews and it's available in all different formats. But with that many reviews and being at $5 each, it's it's getting some really good income and it's something that's a very short book. So it's nonfiction. You might buy this book just to read through it. It's actually a really interesting book about psychology and things like that. But um, it doesn't have to be long, but it does need to be well written. So that brings me to the next point. You either need to be a pretty good writer yourself. You could take online courses and stuff to improve your writing skills. Maybe you're just a natural. Or if you want to hire somebody, if you want to really mass produce these books like some people do for their business, they will hire ghost writers on places like Upwork.com where you can hi hire all sorts of freelancers. So you hire a ghost writer. The ghost writer does not take any credit for the writing, but they are good at putting words together and making them appealing and easy to read so you would basically do the research and then give the research to this ghostwriter and hire them at a place like upwork and they'll write it for you in a way that sounds really good and is really easy for people to read so then another thing you need to do is make sure you create the book in a way that is optimized well for what you're trying to do so again you're trying to get reviews first and then you will focus more on sales and stuff later on. So what you want to do is, again, create a book that's really well put together by hiring a ghostwriter or hopefully being really good at writing yourself if you do it yourself. It doesn't have to be real long, but once you have the book created, you have the title and everything like that, you need to start putting it together in the KDP page. So it'll be a page that looks like this. You do the title, the subtitle, whether it's in a series or not, author, all that stuff. And for author, you can create your own pen name. You don't have to use your real name. A lot of people who do these publishing businesses don't use their real name. But if you want to use your blog or something like that to drive traffic to it, you might want to use your real name. As far as price, you want to start it at 99 cents because what you're trying to do is get a lot of reviews first and you're, you'll focus on sales later and you can start selling books for a larger amount of money each once you've kind of gotten good at getting reviews. You also want to look at the Amazon Kindle publishing guidelines and go through that as far as what they expect of you in writing a book. You don't want to be flagged. You don't want to create a book that's low quality or anything like that. But a lot of it is just common sense. And obviously, if you're doing a nonfiction book that's educational, you're, there's no need to put a whole lot of profanity or a lot of controversial topics in there or things like that. Another thing to keep in mind if you want to also kind of publish your book in a certain format you can use the 
ebook converter for converting a Word document or a PDF to EPUB, for instance, it may be able to allow readers to click on the links in the ebook instead of them having to like just type it out themselves if they see them. So if you're going to promote links at the end of your ebook, you want to promote something. You want to promote at least the title of your other books that might be related. Maybe give them a place where they can go to on your website. Maybe they can opt into your email list. That's what a lot of these people do. They mass produce these books. They get these people to opt into their email list. They get them to buy their other books. They have some back-end sales and back-end marketing at the end of the book for the people who really like the book and want more. So you can convert to EPUB and you may be able to have your links clickable when people are reading it in whatever um, reader they're using. Otherwise, you might just shorten the link so it's real easy to type. So if you're going to promote links to your other books and your email list and things like that at the end of the book, you can use Bitly to shorten your links. That way it's just a few characters long and it's not just super long link. That doesn't look very good. And plus you can track your clicks using Bitly once you do that. Now for reviews, of course, this is how you really rank your book and get it noticed. Um, usually the books that have the most reviews and the highest rating, kind of that combination is what gets people to really um, buy something or to see it at the top of search results. So again, you want to start it at 99 cents so that people are more likely to try it because you're probably someone who they haven't heard of yet. Then make sure you don't do anything shady to get reviews. You don't want to ever pay people for reviews or anything like that. You can approach people in Facebook groups for maybe uh, people who like to read eBooks in your niche that you're targeting and give it away to them for free. You can approach people on the top reviewers list and look up people who might have reviewed similar books to yours. And a lot of people actually are, are people that specialize in reviewing things on Amazon. You can look up that list right there. You can also go to like forums where people tend to really like reading eBooks, but be prepared to give it away for free to get some of these reviews. And then again, that combined with the low price of 99 cents for the book starting out should allow you to get some traction and get more reviews as you kind of drive a little bit more traffic to it. So you can go to say kboards.com and this, this is kind of a forum of people who like to read ebooks and you could find some people maybe that would try it out and give you an honest review. So then after you've done all this, after you've gotten at least like 10 or so reviews, depending on what you need to rank in the top two or three of a search result on Amazon, um, once you're in that top two or three or so, you can raise the price a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit to where you're at least earning 70% royalties. Otherwise, you're earning 35% on 99 cents. You don't want to keep it at that for a long time because obviously you'll make like 30 cents every time someone buys the book. But once you sit it between $2.99 and $9.99, you earn 70% royalties and it makes it a lot more worthwhile and you're making some passive income. So. Other than that, that's kind of how you can make a business selling ebooks on Amazon, even if you are someone who isn't necessarily known for writing skills. A lot of people do this. They outsource most of the process and they make really good money and in passive income mass producing these ebooks that are, that are still high quality, of course, which is something you still need to focus on. But it's just another online business model you can try out. So hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.